and space. He lives in a spectrum of the universe. When he ventures beyond this limit, he is in the unknown, a realm where strange forces are brought into play. When man attempts to misuse these forces, he is sometimes destroyed. This is Macabre. The Far East Network presents, in special performance, Macabre. Tonight's story, Weekend. I can hardly stand to think about it. Such a horrible nightmare. Keep telling myself, maybe it'll help to talk. To try to remember. To put the pieces back together again. But the horror and the terror will never go away. The dead cannot come back. It all began, I, I believe, about two weeks ago. The night of the medical student's graduation party. Held at the home of my fiance, Gloria Duvenet. Ray Stapleton, John Tyler, Gloria and I were the honor guests. Also, our instructor, the well-known experimental scientist, Dr. Peter Tortano. Tortano and I didn't exactly get along. He suspected I knew too much about the Gaylord case, which connected him with experiments on a hidden island. Also, his unusual interest in Gloria was apparent to me, if to no one else, and formed a further basis for a strong mutual dislike. Tortano didn't think that I qualified as a medical student, but he had to admit I'd passed the exam, so here I was. The party was in full swing when I arrived. Everyone was glad to see me, except Tortano. Hi, hi, Jack. What held you up? No party at all without the three of us together, eh, John? Gosh, no. Hi, Dick boy. We thought you weren't coming. Got to have the old team together before the fun starts. Right, Hope. Look, you chaps, come closer. I have a bit of news to tell you. Say, Ray, you sure got to be there. Shoot. What is it, Ray? It's like this. Tortano's about to spring a surprise on us. <laughs> Killing. You know how tight this to the old goat is. Well... He wants to do something for his prize grants. Nothing extravagant. Just a weekend at his place or something like that. What place? I don't know exactly. It couldn't be his small room for the university, so it must be his other place. Oh, the one on the island? Yes, yes, I, I suppose you're right. The, the island? Gosh, you really think he'll take us out there? I don't know of anyone who's ever seen it. Now, don't let on. I told you about it. Wow, Tortano's Island Retreat. They say no one else has ever been on the island. And that he spends his weekends out there all alone. Doing what, I wonder? Oh, I don't know. If he's working on something, why go way out there? Why not at the university? Fellas, there's something about that island you should know. Oh, uh, steady, Dick. Here comes that lovely thing you're engaged to. Oh, hi, Gloria. Hi. What took you so long, Dick? I was afraid you weren't coming. You knew I would, Gloria. <laughs> don't talk. Just dance with me. Hmm... Nice to be in your arms again, sir. Yeah. Uh, where's your mother? In the kitchen, fixing refreshments. <laughs> Dr. Tortano's helping. Oh. Hey, Dick, aren't you drinking? What? Oh, sure. What you got, John? You can name it. Mm, scotch and soda? <laughs> Boy, are you expensive. Okay, coming up. Huh. Gloria. Yeah? Gloria. Uh, what is it, Tom? I don't know how to say it. I still have my internship, and uh, there won't be much money. Don't talk. Just dance. I'll be married as soon as you like. <laughs> Darling. I love you so much. <laughs> I say break it up, you two. You'd think you were the only ones at this party. If you don't mind, I'm cutting in. Oh, Ray. Take your hands off this charming wench, Richard. She's mine for a spell. And thanks for the loaner, fellow. <laughs> All right, Ray. But uh, only for one dance. Uh, the lady is reserved. <laughs> service. Not only fix his drink, but gotta bring it to him. Thanks, John. Uh, and just in time, here comes Tortano out of the kitchen. I think he's ready to talk. Yeah, looks as if he's had a few, too. My friends, my friends, may I have a quiet for a few moments? I'd like to make an announcement. I'll give you a proper introduction, Doctor. <coughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, I give you a man whose reputation as a doctor of medicine and experimental scientist has astounded the medical profession. Our faithful instructor these past four years, the man of the hour, Dr. Peter Tortano. Hey! Yeah. 
Thank you, thank you, my friends. It has been a most difficult year for all of us. Oh, we have worked hard and accomplished much. <laughs> now I think it is time to propose a little holiday. <laughs> so, I am inviting you as my house guests for the weekend. There is plenty of room, ten bedrooms, ten baths, three stories, plenty of space for everyone. Wait a minute. Where is this place? What's the matter, Crane? What are you suspicious of? Where is your place, Doctor? Thirty miles from here. There's a swimming pool, a tennis court, golf course. Where is it? Oh, Dick, please what? don't be rude. Quite all right, my dear. He has a right to know, and uh, it's on an island, twenty miles off the coast. An island? Ideal for relaxation. I assure you, every detail for your comfort has been attended to. I'll bet it has. Well, you can count me out. After four years of hell with you, you'll never make a foreign one weekend. Goodbye. So sorry, Dr. Tortano. Dick's been studying too hard. He didn't mean what he said. Of course not, of course not. He'll change his mind. The boat leaves at four tomorrow afternoon. I know he won't want to miss our last party together. I knew Tortano better than the others. This was no idle plan. Tortano never wasted time in relaxation. He often said, you have to make every minute count if you want to achieve success. I finally went to my room and to sleep. Hello? Dick, what the hell's wrong? You still in bed? Huh? What's the time? Noon, Friday. You'd better get moving. Oh. Don't forget the tennis rackets. I told you I'm not... Since, old chap, we've all decided it'll be loads of fun. Just what the doctor ordered. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, Gloria... Gloria? Yes, yeah, she's going along. She'll, she's right here. Put her on. Uh, yes, sure. Cheerio, old man. Hi, darling. Tack, we're going to have a glorious weekend. Gloria, you listen to me. Oh, Dick, we need some fun together. Now, if you're going to be an old killjoy, I'll just hate you. Gloria... Tortano is no generous soul. If he invited us out there, he's got a damn good reason. Oh, please say yes, darling. Ray and John want to go. And if we accept, that will make five. And Dr. Tortano's manservant wants us to make six. What can possibly happen with six of us there? But I... I can see your mind's made up. Oh, then you'll go. Oh, Dick, that's great. I didn't say I'd oh, go. Oh, I... don't be stuffy. Well, all right. Your heart's set on it. Oh, you won't be stuffy. Yeah. See you, Dockside. Tortano stood in the bow of the boat like some self-satisfied pine piper. Rain clouds were gathering for a squall as the motor launch streamed through billowing waves toward an island looming on the horizon. It was growing dark. A faint light flickered among giant trees to keep form in the distance. We landed about six. It was pitch black. I could tell by the flashlights that we were surrounded by massive oak trees laden with Spanish moss. We followed Tortano down a gravel path toward a large brick structure taking shape in the gloom. The storm broke as we reached the veranda. Tortano led us into a stately parlor where Wattis, a West Indian manservant, began to stack our luggage neatly in a corner. Wattis was a short, weather-beaten little man who never removed the black Quaker hat from his head. He kept glancing back as if he suspected something were creeping up behind him. Well, here we are, all safe and sound. Bedrooms are on the second floor. I suggest you freshen up and meet in the banquet hall promptly at eight for supper. Even though we had just arrived, a feeling of uneasiness began to reach the others. There were ten bedrooms, divided evenly by a hall running the length of the building. I selected one across the hall from Gloria. I just shut the door when someone knocked. Uh, Dick, may I come in? Oh, uh, yes, Ray. Here's your grip, old man. Wantus brought them all upstairs. Mind if I join him? No, I don't. Yeah. Palace fit for a king. Looks like one of those plantations you see in the flicks. But this cost the old boy a pretty penny. You know, I've been wondering, Dick, where Tortano got the money to buy this place? Hmm? I believe he inherited something from his father. Since he didn't make it himself. Might have. He's a capable man, Ray. He's a doctor, an experimental scientist. Enough money in that, I suppose. Well, uh, ever since the Gaylord oh, case... They, they never proved anything. Totano didn't do that. Well, there was no reason for her to die. Even I could have saved her. Dick, 
don't hold something that may not be true against anyone. I'm not. It's just a suspicion. Sotano knows you suspect him. I don't give a damn oh. what he... Very well. So you dislike each other. Uh, forget it. Let's get ready for supper, Ray. Meet you downstairs. Right, Hal. If it's any consolation, I'm with you on one thing, though. What's that? This weekend out here... Yeah? Can't put my finger on it. But I don't think it was planned for fun. My friends, I'd like to make a little speech. <laughs> Excuse me. I am not much with words. Just a grumpy little man of medicine. Uh, but I always mean well. Now, it's been a long and tedious course these past four years. It isn't easy to become a doctor, and the hard part is yet to come for the graduates, that of internship, where you'll learn to weigh the actual values, where one slip of the scalpel can mean death or a hideous malfunction of the body or the mind. I welcome you to my island estate. You deserve a rest. So make merry and cast the cares of the world aside. Now to bed, children. To bed. Tomorrow will be a day of tennis, swimming, and fun-making. This will be a weekend you'll remember for the rest of your lives. Ah, aren't you sleepy? <laughs> no. Come in. <laughs> My bedroom is across the hall. I just wanted to say good night. Please do. Gloria. Darling, I love you so much. Let's be married right away. <laughs> Dick, you're so impetuous. <laughs> but I accept. <laughs> good. <laughs> Are you comfortable here? Oh, my, yes. Private bath and all. So you have a telephone, too. All the bedrooms must have them. Well, better leave and let you get some rest. I'll lock your door when I leave. All right. Thanks for dropping in. Good night, Gloria. Dick? Yes? Lock your door, too. Oh, come now. This is a weekend of fun and relaxation, remember? Uh, don't laugh at me, Dick. I'm really just playing it safe. Oh, sure. <laughs> Good night, darling. Good night, Dick. And please, lock it. I don't know how long I'd been asleep. It must have been several hours. Something had brushed against my bedroom door. The sound made me sit straight up in bed. Then I heard something else. <laughs> I thought someone was in trouble. <laughs> Who's out there? Whatever it was, it stopped outside my bedroom door. I turned on the lamp, jumped out of bed, and bolted toward the door. The hall was empty. No sign of anything or anyone. Was it possible I imagined this? When I turned to close my door, I saw it. A dark form bobbing in a doorway at the end of the hall. I say, Dick, is that you? It was Ray Stapleton. Strange sound I just heard. My word, Dick, did you hear it too? Hey, hey, you guys. What's going on around here? Who was strangled? Wow, what a gagging cough. What's the matter? Is anything wrong? Gentlemen, gentlemen. What's the commotion about? You're disturbing the entire household. Now, hold on, Doctor. We were just trying to find out who was doing all that coughing here in the hall a moment ago. Coughing? Nonsense. Must be your imaginations. You're all here, and you look mighty well to me. Wait a minute. Where's Wantus? He's missing. He could be the one. Wantus is standing directly behind you, John. Is there trouble, Master? No, Wantus. Nothing at all. Now go back to your bedroom and remain there the rest of the night. Do you understand? Back? To bedroom? Yes, immediately. I, master, want us not come out again. Good night, master. But Dr. Tortano, the coughing. Strictly imagination, I tell you. But I heard it, doctor, and so did the others. There's no one else in this island. So just who do you think it might be? Yes. I see what you mean. Imagination is a powerful thing. So much so that under certain conditions, strong stimuli and compel you to think you have actually experienced something that didn't happen at all. Remember, this is the 20th century. We're not in the Dark Ages. No skeletons in the closet or secret wall panels. Return to your rooms, please. 
Good night, children. I didn't sleep the rest of that night. I'm certain the others didn't either. They were losing their enthusiasm for the weekend. The next morning, after breakfast, I went for a walk on the beach with Gloria. It wasn't long before Ray and John called Hello, up with us. Dick. I want to talk to you. Hi, fellas. You sleep well? Don't rub it in, Dick. Gosh, no. We in the first place. That's what we wanted to do. You'd like to give up and go home today. Is that what you mean? Yes, and all you're making it devilishly difficult. Now, I, I think we might still salvage a sporting time here. After all, nothing's really happened. But there's been dissension at this party ever since it started. And now there's a feeling of unpleasantness. We can't leave the island. Hey, Wantis took the boat back to the mainland this morning for emergency repairs. And he won't be back until tomorrow. He did. Wantis has the only boat. There's no other way back to shore. So we just have to make the best of it. Dick, I'm with you. I don't think I like old Tortano. Fine kettle of fish. The island's the kettle, and we're the fish. And Tortano's the fisherman. Break it up. Let's go back to the house. I have a hunch. I think we'll soon know what this is all about. Tortano spent the day rechecking his notes and shaking his head. I didn't think him capable of feeling alarm, but his composure was rapidly leaving him. We swam a little and played some tennis. By evening, a cloud burst made a valiant attempt to wash the little island out to sea. After supper, a worried Tortano summoned us to the library. As we gathered, he stood up with an air of uncertainty and started to speak. I wish I could charm you with a graceful speech and make you laugh when I grow tired of talking. But I haven't been altogether honest with any of you. I brought you here on the pretext of having a wonderful weekend. That was only partly true. All right, Doctor, tell us the truth. You would better listen to me. There may not be much more time. Last night at supper... I gave you all a powerful stimulant. I tried to magnify your powers of imagination to the point where fantasy could be made reality by varying the dosages given each of you. The one coming closest to fulfilling the experiment would give me the correct formula balance. An overdose affects the respiratory system in such a way that the victim has periods of convulsive coughing of which he is completely unaware. 24 hours after the onset of coughing, the victim goes mad. And if my notes are correct, God forgive me, I didn't mean to go this far. Yes, Doctor? If my notes are correct, the victim may become physically anything he might imagine. The coughing started last night. I can't decide at the moment who may have gotten the overdose. I am also suspect, as I too took the drug, there are no guns on the island, no telephone or radio transmitter, and no way to get back to the mainland tonight. So we'll have to remain here. Go singly to your rooms. Bolt yourselves in. Don't open the doors for anyone. Your lives will depend on it. I'm afraid, my children, that before morning, we may have a madman among us. We locked ourselves in our bedrooms and waited. The others agreed with me. Tortano was insane to invent such a fantastic story. He was the one we should be protected from. We were completely at his mercy. Our only chance was to humor him until Wattis returned with the boat and escaped to the mainland. I must have fallen asleep. The storm had subsided to a whisper. Something had awakened me. What it was, I don't know. I lay there in the dark, scarcely breathing, waiting. There was no sound of any kind. Could I have imagined it? Maybe I should get up and look. Perhaps... Something was waiting for me to go back to sleep before attacking. But what? Nothing could have come into my room. And yet, somehow, I felt the presence of something out in the hall. There was just some sound, some clue as to what it might be. All I could do was lie here and wait for an unknown thing to happen at any moment. I waited and listened. I knew it was out there. Then, there it was. My was trying to scratch open my bedroom door. I reached for a bronze poker on the night table, got out of bed, and tiptoed to the door. It was on the other side. I could hear breathing. Don't open the door, I told myself. It's just outside waiting for me to do that. Even with a poker, I might be no match. Then, it occurred 
to me that it wouldn't be waiting unless it knew a way into my bedroom. Of course, it was coming in to get me. What about Gloria across the hall? Had it already been there? I decided to act. You! Out there! I'm opening this door. If you're still there, I'll kill you! What's that? All lights are out. Pitch black. Something padded off on four feet. God, it smells like a cat. It's so dark, I can't see my hand before my face. Got to get across the hall to Gloria. Judging by the way it bounded off, it must be at least 15 feet away. If only the flashlight. Can't see a thing. Easy does it now. Keep the poker swinging in a circle. I should keep it from creeping up on me. But here's Gloria's door. Gloria, open your door. Is that you, Dick? For God's sake, yes, hurry. Are you all right, darling? I think so. What's the matter, Dick? The thing. It's right across the hall. The thing? Yes. Whatever it is, it's after us. I was afraid it might have tried to get you. Quick, your phone. Where is it? Right by the bed. Oh. What are you doing? All the others. The one who doesn't answer is out there. Some creature. Set more light, will you? Oh, yes. Really, now. It's the middle of the night. Ray, something's wrong. You okay? Yes, I'm quite all right. Good. Meet me in the library in five minutes. Uh, Ray's not the one. Try John next. Maybe. Hello? John, you all right? Oh, hi, Dick. Sure, why? Can't talk now. Meet me in the library in five minutes. Hmm. Pretty well cinches it. Haskelly Tortano is the only one left. If he doesn't answer, we'll know. Hello, Tortano here. Oh, no. And who can it be? They're all accounted for. Who the devil is this? Dick Crane, doctor. Meet me in the library in five minutes. Are you crazy? Stay in your room and keep it all up. There's something fishy, and I'm going to find out who's behind it. Now, you be there. If any harm comes to my friends, I'll kill you. We're not safe to get in the library. And I don't believe a word of your wild story. It's true. One of you tried to scratch open my door. You imagined it, Dick. Here we all are, as chipper as ever. Pretty obvious whatever was supposed to happen hasn't yet. It happened to someone. Impossible. We're all still sane. There's no one else on the island. This took place in your mind, Dick. Now let's all go back to our rooms and try to get through the night. Uh, I'm wasting my time with you. All right, I'll stay with Gloria and protect her. But you'd better lock your doors because someone is going to try them. Say, Dick is certainly overwrought. He couldn't have been right, though, since we're all so healthy. Dangerous situation now standing here together. Let's return to our rooms. Well, maybe nothing will happen. It could start momentarily. I strongly advise separating immediately. Wait. Hold out your hands. What? I just remembered. It's been 24 hours. There is a certain symptom at this time. The victim's fingernails will have a bluish tinge. We can tell who it is. Quick, look at your hands. Hold them out. What do you see? Here are mine, doctor. Uh, normal. Uh, are, are mine okay? Mm. Yes, yes. What about yours, doctor? Take a close look. I'd say they're all right. That means... Good Lord, it's Dick or Gloria. They've gone to Gloria's room together. We've got a moment to lose. Come quickly with me. Dick, where are you? In the bathroom, shaving. Be out in a minute. Oh, hurry, dear. I don't like being left alone. We're locked in together. No one can bother us now. Oh, Dick, you sound so strange. Please come out of that bathroom. Dick? Oh, Dick? Is anything the matter? Dick! <laughs> oh, that cough! In this room! Oh, no, no. Not Dick! Can't be Dick! I won't believe it! Can't be Gloria! Dick! Open this door, do you hear? Where is it? Look down now! I knocked this door immediately! Oh, where is it?
Gloria. It was Gloria. Don't look, Ray. I tried to stop her. No. Well, that couldn't be Gloria. Not our beautiful Gloria. Whatever it is, it's in peace at last. So is Tortano. Throat clawed out. As if by a lion. You have just heard Macabre, a special Far East Network presentation. In our cast were John Dewey, Shirley Ashey, Walt Sheldon, William Verdier, Milton Radmilovich, and Air Force Sergeant Bob Eddy. Technical supervision by Hiroshi Ono. This is Air Force Sergeant Al LePage speaking. Macabre was written and directed by William Verdier. Macabre comes to you each week at this time through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Mm-hmm.